NANI?! That's nasty. There are many problems with current Russian tanks, but the one that people find most intriguing is the why don't they make more T-14s? The answer is way more complicated than it appears at the first sight. If you are in any way interested in the situation with Russian tanks, you've probably heard of the new T-80 BVM tank, which is an upgrade of old T-80 BV tank with new fire control system, relic explosive reactive armor and new 1250 horsepower gas turbine engine. At the same time, T-90M tank appeared, which is an upgrade for our already well-known T-90A tank, which shows how far the old Soviet design has advanced and to what level it can be brought. Back to the T-80. The main issue I and many other people see in it is that it is an upgrade of a 40-year-old tank. Of course, I'm talking about T-80B, which got introduced in 1978, where the base T-80BV has small improvements over its such as improved hull armor but the deterrent remains the same as the one from 1978. Instead of upgrading T-80BV tanks, they could have easily picked T-80U tank, which is in every way better than T-80BV, including the much better designed and protected turret. Not to mention the T-80U E1, which has even more protected turret, which would, with addition of relic explosive reactive armor, be impervious to any APVSDS projectile currently in service. But instead, they chose T-80BV. The only difference between T-80BV and T-80U is that there are more T-80BV tanks in stock, which would make sense if they were actually upgrading all those numbers, but so far only 62 have been confirmed to have entered service. The main reason for picking T-80BV for upgrades given by the Russian Ministry of Defense is that city of Oms could use better economy and opening some of the old factories would bring many more working places. Thus, Omsk Transmash, which after the collapse of USSR was purchased by Ural Wagon Zavod, received more workers and thus improved the economy. But they could have easily went with any other T-80 tank, such as the already mentioned T-80U, since Omsk Transmash is the only factory that has the capability to work with any of T-80 tanks. So far, all things presented, it doesn't really make sense to pick T-80 BV over any more modern T-80 tanks. Not to mention the T-80 UE-1 already has modern fire control system with Sosnevu site. It could only use Relict to bring it to more modern standard. Now onto the number one issue I have with Russian tanks, the T-72B3. The tank as a tank has many issues compared to most modern tanks, including the rest of the Russian ones. Mainly its protection, which is severely lacking. The base of the tank is the T-72B from 1985, which is also the year when T-80U entered service, but T-80U hasn't been improved ever since. The T-72B3 has, and the fact that they chose just to slap it with Contact 5 ERA in 2012 is crazy. On top of which, it didn't even have an ERA block next to the gun, exposing a big area, something which the T-72B3 model 2016 received. My main issue with the tank is that they chose it to be the most numerous tank. There are around 1500 T-72B3 tanks currently in service in Russia. In comparison, there are only up to 500 T-90 tanks and around 450 T-80U tanks. T-72B3 has somewhat good firepower, and that is it. Fire control system is mediocre and only because of the Sosna U main gun site, which incorporates Catherine FC second generation thermal imaging but the commander lacks his own thermal imager and can only access the gunners via a small monitor. Something that western tanks got rid of over 25 years ago when for example M1A2 received commander's independent thermal viewer or CITV for short. And unlike what many articles have written about, original T-72B3 tanks still retain the old 840 horsepower engine, which means that even the mobility of the tanks is lagging behind most modern tanks. 
only a small number of T-72B3 tanks received the 1130 horsepower engine and it's not until T-72B3 model 2016 that entered service in 2017 that they haven't made 1130 horsepower engine a standard. The tank is good for actions against third world countries and some second world countries, but even those countries started receiving better tanks, and in 5 to 10 years, the 72B3 won't even be good against them. The only reason why they chose the 72B3 is that they have a lot of T-72B tanks in stock, and Ural Wagonzavod has already produced a lot of spare parts for T-72 tanks. And on top of everything, as T-72 tank was the most common tank in USSR for a long time, Crew training doesn't need to be changed a lot, hence why T-90 tanks are not much different than T-72 in comparison. But they could have easily made T-72B3 much better. Installing a better welded turret, as seen on T-90A, could have made the tank much better. And if not that, they could have chosen Relic Theory A, which was proposed on T-72B2 Rogatka, which sadly never entered service. But instead, they went with 30-year-old Contact 5 Erie A. It is also worth mentioning the T-72 tank everyone refers to as T-72B4, the one Russians used in the tank Biathlon, which featured a commander's independent thermal viewer. I would like to first note that the tank does not have any designation, aka doesn't have a name. But it is not all that bad, it is an improvement over basic T-72B3 since it has the CITV and the automatic transmission with more powerful engine. But just like Ragatka, it never entered service. If you want to know more about T-72B3, check out my video, Is T-72 Obsolete, where I covered the tank much more in depth. And now, the T-14 Armata. Why don't they make more of them? Well, I have already somewhat explained it through the video, but let's sum it up now. Most of the tanks are T-72s, replacing all of them with T-14 can't happen overnight, because T-14 is a completely different design that has almost nothing similar to T-72B3. Which means that the training procedure has to be changed. All of spare parts have to be scrapped or tossed away. They would need to find customers to sell their tanks from stock since they need to retrieve those T-72B3 to reserves, or they would either need to scrap the tanks from stock, which would also take time and money. According to latest news, T-14 has entered serial production and the first production vehicles will be showcased on the Victory Parade this year and are said to have some external differences compared to the tanks we have seen so far. You also have to keep in mind that it's a completely new tank. Factories need to be reworked or they need to make completely new ones. Such is the case of this one that was made last year. Therefore, if nothing goes wrong, the number of produced tanks per year should be steadily increasing, especially now when it enters serial production. You can't compare it to Abrams, for example, which is an upgrade over upgrade over upgrade of the original Abrams tank. Thus, the numbers produced of the Abrams cannot be compared to the one of the Armata, which is completely different than anything made so far. In conclusion, they should really focus on further upgrade their t 72 b 3 tanks if they want to keep them. They may be good now, but as I said, in 5 to 10 years, they won't be. Also, they should really look into upgrading T-80U tanks. Currently, they aren't very good, but they have a lot of potential. Also, the new T-90M tank is a very good tank. It's on par with, and if not better, than most of modern tanks in the world, but also like T-80BM, no more than 62 have been reported. The tank is good, but I'm worried that it arrived a bit too late. It is on par with many tanks, sure, but will it be in 5 to 10 years? I doubt they will come up with anything better for the T90 platform in that period. The tank is good now, around 30 are being produced per year for now, but what will happen with it remains to be seen. And that is it, thanks for watching. If you like my content, please consider supporting me on Patreon, it would really mean a lot. Join my Discord server if you have some questions or just want to chat, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.